Okay, so thank you again for joining the Participation Reports webinar. My name is Anna Tolwinska and I'm a Member Experience Manager here at Crossref. I work as part of the Member and Community Outreach Team and it's my pleasure to talk to you a bit about Participation Reports. So today I will show you how easily you can track what metadata you're registering with Crossref, uh, why you should be checking the report regularly, how to interpret the reports, um, and also see how um, you can uh, improve the metadata coverage levels. So I'm hoping to run these webinars monthly. Uh, my uh, colleague, Paul Davis, from our support team is also on this webinar and will help me with any questions while I'm presenting. So thank you so much, Paul, for joining me today. Uh, but before we jump in, I'm going to um, share a quick poll with you. So uh, let me just start it and hopefully everyone will see this um, a box pop up and please go ahead and um, answer the question if you see it. So the question is, um, all the metadata I collect is automatically sent to Crossref. And there are three answers, yes, no, or not sure. Uh, and when the poll is um, uh, finished, I'm going to share the results. So let's give it a, a minute for everyone to uh, submit their answer. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish uh, the poll and the poll now and share the results. Hopefully everyone can see um, the poll results. Um, so it looks like uh, no, uh, all of the metadata I collect is not automatically sent to Crossref. That was the winner at 44%. Um, the yeses were about 22% and the not sures were about uh, 34%. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on. So please keep this in mind, this poll in mind um, as I'm presenting. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay, so uh, next up we have um, what, um, so I'll go ahead and tell you a bit about the report. So what are the reports? Um, so it's a place where you can check what metadata you're registering with Crossref. Um, they are open and free to use uh, by anyone, so they're open to the public. Uh, they allow you to track the levels of metadata over time. Uh, this is handy, um, especially if you're using service providers or if you're not directly responsible for registering the metadata yourself. Um, and also, um, they allow members to see how they measure up to other members, where the gaps are, and how they can be improved. So they're about two years old, I think, at this point. We launched them um, in the summer of 2018. Um, they're still in beta, or what we like to call phase one, um, so we're hoping to improve them. If you have any feedback, please um, let us know. So you may be wondering why we developed these reports. Um, well, we they came about mainly because um, we have been hearing from our members at conferences and um, emails to our support staff um, and on calls and meetings that uh, our members are not always sure what metadata they are registering with us. So we always assume that um, they knew, but um, sometimes it's hard to, you know, to tell what you're sending us. Uh, so we decided to make it easier for uh, everyone, uh, including ourselves. Um, to see what metadata was being registered in Crossref. So this data has always been available uh, or for some, quite some time through our REST API, but not everyone um, knows how to query our um, API and it's not very user-friendly. It's more uh, geared at machines um, and the interface is not as um, easy to use. Um, so 
Another reason for the participation reports was that it made it easier for our members to see what's missing and how to fill in the gaps and update, update their metadata. So how can we um, you know, expect someone to fix something if they're not actually sure that it is missing? So that's, that was quite important as well. And lastly, the reports allow our members to track their progress and see if they have updated. Um, uh, what they have updated is actually being reflected in Crossref. So this brings us back to the poll um, at the beginning of the webinar. Um, you may think you are sending something to Crossref, but um, it may actually be um, not as complete as you think. So where does the metadata in Crossref actually end up? So, you know, we're asking you to add all of this metadata, but um, why are you doing it? So because Crossref's metadata is standardized and machine readable, it is very useful to many different organizations and services that help make your content more discoverable. Um, and here are a few examples. And I'm going to share the slides with you tomorrow so you will have this, this slide. Um, but it, this, this slide shows exactly how, um, what kind of services, what types of organizations run um, and use Crossref's metadata. So it's, it's really important. So things like author profiling tools, metrics and analytics, library discovery services. Um, metadata also helps fill in uh, gaps for even our members. Um, uh, it helps with aggregating and integrating content and matching and linking citations. So it's, 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 um, it's all encompassing and it's, it's quite important to um, register rich metadata to make your content more useful to your readers. Okay. So when registering uh, metadata in Crossref, you have to make sure that um, the metadata is correct, that there are no errors, typos, et cetera, that it's um, complete, um, that all of the fields that you can manage are registered, not just the first author, but all of them, publication dates, and anything not required as well. You can ask your authors for ORCID identifiers and funding information as well and always make sure that it's up to date. So um, uh, also talk to your vendors or your production teams to make sure that um, you know, there are no other extra costs involved in registering extra metadata or making sure that it's up to date. Um, and once you update your metadata, you can expect it um, to see it reflected in the participation report in about 24 hours. And all updates are free of charge. So um, it doesn't matter how many updates you make to content, um, it's always free of charge to update your content. Okay, so now um, let's see how um, the participation reports actually work. So I'm going to navigate to this uh, URL and I'm going to select uh, a member. So um, this is, you, you'll see the search box um, and you can search by members. So I'm going to use Hindawi today, uh, Hindawi Limited. It's a very, it's a good example of rich metadata publisher that registers rich metadata with us. Um, and when you end up on this main page, um, if you uh, made a mistake or uh, typed in uh, the wrong name or you just wanna check another member, all you need to do is go back to find a member. So if you click on that again, then you can select the same name from the dropdown. Um, but here we are, this is the main page of the participation reports. You will see the member name listed here, and then total registered content items uh, will be listed here. And that's the total, um, uh, total DOI number of all, everything that that member has registered. Um, however, you need to uh, make sure that you're looking at the correct um, date range in the dropdown. So right now we're looking at current content, but if we wanted to see the uh, entire um, total, then you, we would have to select all time. So um, since Hindawi Limited uh, joined Crossref, they've registered over 200,000 uh, DOIs with us. 
Uh, so, but we will definitely look at current content because that is the last um, about three years of content. Uh, it's the most recent and most of our members um, keep that content um, up to date uh, with additional metadata. Uh, okay, so the first thing you can do um, is you can select the content type on the left uh, of the report. So if you want to look at a content type different than what it defaults to, and it usually defaults to the main content type. So this particular publisher has um, journal articles as their main content type. Um, and you can tell that if you select um, all time, you can see the different content types and the numbers. So they only have uh, about 500, over 500 conference papers and 18 books. So the largest content type is the journal article. So that is what it will default to. And it always defaults to current content. So you know the, the most recent content that has been registered with Crossref. And we define current content as anything registered in uh, the year that we're currently in and two previous years. So um, right now we're at, at about two and a half years worth of um, uh, most uh, recently published content. And that for Hindawi is about close to 50,000 articles. So we're looking at that number here. Um, the next thing you will see is search by title. Um, you can also uh, select a title if you know the title uh, of, the, of the journal. You can look at each journal separately. Um, and that is what this search box is for here in the middle. But we will look at all of the content holistically and I will now describe um, each one of the different elements that we ask uh, that uh, you register with us. So um, references. Uh, references are really important because they give researchers um, a vital data point through which uh, to find your content. They also enable the you to you cited by if you want to participate in a Crossref service called Cited by, which shows which articles are citing your article. Um, so that is really important to deposit your references or citations as part of your metadata deposit. And in this case, Hindawi is depositing 98% of um, references for 90 percent of their DOIs. So that's uh, really great. If you are ever confused about what you're looking at in this report, there's a little eye here that you can hover over it and it just describes what you're looking at. So for example, for references, it is the percentage of content items or DOIs that include reference lists in their metadata. Um, open references just means that the references that you've registered are open across all of our um, services and um, APIs. Uh, you have a choice of um, selecting uh, uh, whether they're limited or open um, or closed, but we do encourage everyone to keep their references open just so that um, all of the services and, um, and our REST API has access to the references and um, they become more useful that way. And if you find that you have a zero percentage here, you can let us know that you'd like them set to open and we can do that quite easily. You can just email support at crossrap.org and request that change. ORCID identifiers, um, once again, it's the percentage of DOIs or content items containing ORCID identifiers. Um, and it's just, um, uh, so at least if, if you have at least one ORCID, uh, registered as part of your metadata deposit, this will show up. Um, and it's really important to um, register ORCIDs because they allow you to precisely identify a researcher's work, even if the researcher shares um, a name with another researcher. Uh, next up, we have funder registry IDs um, and also funding award numbers. So this is kind of interconnected, it's funding data, um, and it's, it's really important um, to make sure that if you do collect funding uh, information that you pass it on to Crossref. Um, so once again, it's the percentage of registered content items that contain the name and the funder registry ID. 
uh, we have an open funder registry ID that holds um, many different funder names. If you don't find um, a funder name in our uh, registry, you can um, contact us and we will be happily, we, we will um, happily add that name to the list. I think we have over 21,000 organizations listed in the funder registry at this point now. Um, so um, it's, it's quite easy to add um, a funder uh, and the matching funder um, um, identifier into the metadata. And it's really useful because um, it allows publishers to analyze sources of funding and to ensure compliance with funder mandates. Um, and it allows funding organizations to better track published results of their grants. So um, it's really kind of key um, if you do collect that information to uh, make it available through Crossref. The same, and the same uh, thing goes for funding award uh, numbers or grant numbers. If you do collect them, you can include them in the metadata as well. So um, um, please do so uh, if you do. Crossmark enabled. This particular publisher is not participating in Crossmark, uh, but Crossmark allows you to um, show um, whether your uh, whether your article has been changed or updated since publication. Um, so it's really important to show anything any changes um, and. Um, uh, Crossmark um, allows uh, you to do that. It also includes a widget that you can install on your um, HTML and PDFs that it provides a link and a little logo to a, and then a pop-up to let the reader know whether your content has changed since publication. So it's quite useful and this is the first year that we don't charge um, an extra fee for a Crossmark deposit. So um, it's completely um, uh, free to use now. Um, so if you're interested, please let us know. Um, and once again, um, if, you, um, if you ever you know, uh, don't know what you're looking at here, you can just hover over the eye um, and it will you know, tell you exactly what you're looking at, why it's important and uh, where you can learn more about it um, and how you can improve the score. Uh, we're also very, always happy to answer any questions at support at crossref.org as well. Uh, next up, we have a series of different URLs that you can submit as part of your metadata deposit. Um, so first up, we have text mining URLs. Um, so text mining URLs help researchers automatically analyze and extract information from a large uh, number of documents. Um, so this makes it easier for researchers to mat text and data mine your content. Um, and you can include uh, text mining, full text mining um, URLs for the purposes of text and data mining for uh, researchers in your metadata um, as well. So um, you can do that and then if you'd like to also um, include licenses, there are different types of licenses. Um, uh, for example, licenses pertaining to text and data mining, uh, you can include um, what the researcher that you're allowing to text and data mine your content can and cannot do with that content uh, as part of the licensing. Uh, you can also include open access licenses, CC BY, um, or a regular, um, you know, copyright licenses as well. So, so anyone um, uh, querying the Crossref uh, data can uh, easily see whether the content is or isn't um, uh, openly um, accessible and what, um, what they can and cannot do with that content. Uh, next up, we have similarity check URLs. If you are a Crossref member that is, um, either interested in similarity check, uh, which is our um, uh, uh, service that helps um, um, check whether you know, your content is uh, suspected um, or your content has so many similarities that it could potentially be plagiarized. Um, you can contribute your full text URLs to the uh, database that um, authenticate, um, which runs the uh, technology for similarity check, will index um, and uh, keep, you know, so that everyone that's participating in the service can check against the full text. 
um, so you can submit your full text URLs for the purposes of similarity check in Crossref as well. And in this particular case, um, Hindawi is do, you know, submitting 100% of their 49,000, over 49,000 DOIs, um, uh, the full text for those DOIs to Crossref. Okay, uh, and last but not least, we have abstracts. So um, abstracts um, give more information to the user about your content, making your items more discoverable. So if you do have abstracts, you can include them in the metadata, um, and that way they will get um, you know, used by a variety of different services, organizations, and researchers to um, to actually know, um, um, give a little bit more context and um, information about what you know they're potentially going to be reading. So it's it's quite important. And in this case, um, Hindawi is uh, registering about ninety six percent of um, all of the forty nine thousand uh, articles that they have uh, registered with us have abstracts. Um, sometimes you'll see that not. Um, the numbers are not exactly 100% because uh, sometimes it might be, you know, uh, a publication without an abstract or a publication without funding information. So it's okay not to be at 100% all the time, but um, it would be great, you know, to strive for um, a higher number than, than zero, hopefully. <laughs> um, so um, let's let me see what else we have here. Oh, and I just wanted to point out as well, um, the numbers will always tend to be lower or skew lower for backfile content. So if we look at older content, we were looking at the most current content. But if we look, look at older content, it's usually a little bit lower. Um, Hindawi is still pretty good. Um, uh, very good, actually, uh, on their the back file front, but you will see that the numbers, especially for ORCIDs or funding information or even abstracts um, uh, and references tend to skew lower when you look at older content, so it's okay. Um, and of course, then if you look at it holistically as well, um, the numbers will um, be a little bit lower than current content. Uh, we can also take a look at other um, uh, content types. Um, the journal article is the uh, content type with the most uh, or the richest metadata that we have in Crossref, but you are able to register um, extra metadata for different content types. So for example, for books, you can still do references, ORCIDs, um, you know, text mining URLs, license URLs, crossmark and similarity check. Um, not Every publisher um, registers rich metadata for content uh, other than uh, journal articles, but we do um, encourage you to do so. Here um, is another content type, conference papers, um, and conference papers um, um, is you know, a fast growing content type at Crossref. Um, you can uh, register additional metadata for your conference papers as well, um, so if you, uh, primarily publish uh, different content types, uh, please keep that in mind as well. It's not just journal articles that you can deposit uh, rich metadata for. Um, and as I mentioned before, you can also look up um, specific titles. So um, let's do advances in multimedia. Um, and you might see, um, if especially if you publish a lot of um, articles, that sometimes one um, or if you publish a lot of different journal titles, um, some titles will have better coverage than others. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Um, and sometimes um, you might find gaps that way as well if you look at it title by title. So these, um, the participation reports are open to the public. Anyone can use them. Um, and I do invite you to um, take a look. So let's see what else do we have here. I just have a couple of screenshots because I thought if um, the internet does not um, work out very well, I will need some screenshots um, as well. Um, and now we have an activity. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, this is the end of the demo and I'm going to have a couple of polls um, and then we can um, 
help you with some of the questions that you may have.